Hello, how are you doing guys? It's King Harp. I am basically driving around here with my son um, and a friend and constituent. And basically, you know, I'm in Alpharetta, Georgia actually. And I'm looking at a lot of Mexicans working in a very beautiful area. Very, very red area. Which, you know, I actually live in Alpharetta myself. And honestly, I just went into a gas station, which a couple years ago, it was a gas station a little different. Now we got Mexicans all over it. And you know where they have um, subways in the gas station? This gas station had a subway in it and like a um, Jersey Mike one time. And now in the back of it, it, it has tacos, all kinds of um, Spanish language, all kinds of lists of Spanish foods. And every associate in there was Spanish, was Mexican. And they didn't speak English, most of them coming in and out the store, and then I saw black shoppers. Now this is a white area where we at. There's a Chick-fil-A across the street, a macaroni grill, it, you know, all of this. Very beautiful area. Not a poor area. Not a poor area at all, at all. This is very beautiful, big money it is in this area. They are making these people out of a brand. So they're owning the gas station more than likely because the way it's set up. And me and my son was inside of there just looking at it. I, I don't think you know everybody and black people that was coming in there. I don't think in the massive number we really realized what's happening to us. Now the grassroots and the conscious community, we're talking about it. But I don't think we realize what's happening to us. And I don't think we realize what it means to go with lesser evils. You know, we've already done that, remember? Joe Biden and President Trump, we said we'd rather keep Donald Trump. Why not? Why not? It's it actually a better thing that we keep Donald Trump. Joe Biden is an insult from the belly in all through to the belly out. He's an insult. Like he has been active he, in, in, in demising the black legacy, the, the black community. Him and Kamala Harris. They just locked up black people in prison, like a camp. Like, there's some kind of slave trade. You know, you you can't abide by this rule, we take your life away. We make you work. Kamala Harris making black women put out fires in California and in prison. And, and you got Joe Biden who wrote up the crime bill to, for mass incarceration. And he can't keep his children off drugs. Now, I'm not saying Donald Trump is not a racist. Because, like I said in my last talk, racist is not a person. It's in a way which you're anchored, which you can suppress another group. And any white person can be racist if they choose to. So Donald Trump definitely is a white man, and he's a rich white man who's a German. Okay, whatever. Donald Trump is racist. Okay, what does that have to do with the lesser evil of government and the price of tea? We're constantly saying it to ourselves. So... Why in the hell did we stand, well, for illegal immigration when they got DACA, they got the white liberals in business, they're here for cheaper labor, they are pushing you Negroes to the side, taking your lunch. And I, I just kind of want to have a voice about it, you know what I'm saying? And, and just... It's unreal what Democrats has done. I mean, we were standing hard for immigration like we're saving them from slavery. I mean, now we see, do we see them now? Now that they're safe in their cities with these bills, the green light, SB 54, do you hear anything from them now? They don't even look at you when you go into their businesses. You don't mean nothing. You're, you're like a mule, a political mule to them. They are cuddled by white liberals. My son, he talking with me. I mean, you got anything you want to say? Um, it's just not orderly. It's out of order. 
to have people uh, an establishment like that who can't even greet you as you're walking through the door because of a language barrier uh, this is this is a well established area this is a, a prominent area uh, an upscale prominent area I think uh, we should have at least English speaking work workers who can communicate uh, it's just it's just out of order. It's out of order. It's like you, uh, you, you you're giving somebody else's lunch away. You're giving away somebody else's lunch, and uh, it, it, without consent, without consent, and saying, "Hey, can I give uh, can I give Johnny your lunch?" Uh, you know, you, you're just like taking his lunch away and giving it to somebody else. So it, it's it, yeah, it's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Giving somebody else life away. Life, you know. I compared. I, I said yeah, lunch, but, but lunch is a good metaphor. You know. But a, as you go, you you first they take your lunch, and it's okay because you go get you another lunch. But now you begin to see they want your life. It's a yeah. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a whole profile, credit score. Uh, they want access, access access to what you never had through your lineage. Through who you are. These people are here on the lineage of slave descendants. On black people. They're on the lineage. They're having children on amendments that were given to slave descendants. And their children are not like them. Their children are acting like white white people. Oh, we're better than you. Mexicans are better than black people. Heads or tails, Mexicans are better than black people. This is the this is the young man here, my son, that ran into a little Mexican boy who said, well, if I if, if it land on heads, if you're flipping a coin, Mexicans are better than black people. You know what I told my son? I said, you need to next time take that coin from him, put it in your pocket, and say, this is what your parents do. They take from people. And they taught you to do well. They taught you to do the same. Because it's true. This young man actually had the nerve to say this because in his mind he's made a brand he doesn't know any better he don't even know our story he don't even know that the fact that dreamers came from Dr. King which is my uncle which is our blood lineage you know and that's a metaphor that he doesn't even understand that this little kid that's coming from this group so they're making a group in the United States that is going to be inbred to oppose who we are naturally. The weaponized. Weaponizing. Yeah. And that's just a child. That was a child. He couldn't be no more than six years old. And he's already weaponized to think, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. A six-year-old child. So... And you know, this is serious. This is serious. I don't, I don't know what else to do about it, but but speak out. Because they're saying that we are xenophobic when we talk about this hate group. That's one thing that us and white folks actually got in common is that our society is being taken over by other groups who are very rude to us now period period rude, rude sometimes rude is not even a word I mean they they just don't know how to interact they don't have that hospitality that American you know that American customer service that you know that that people the the, the, the typical mannerism the traditional mannerism of what goes on in this country they don't know that some of them do but most of them don't they come here and they come here aggressively. They come in here just ready to steal, you know, ready to take, you know, barbaric. And they don't really, they don't really care to understand our um, etiquette. They don't really care to understand our professionalism and our customer service. They got a KFC in the area. We've been calling corporate for three years. They've gotten in trouble up there. And... They constantly getting in trouble up there. Now they, they had to put black people by the window. Now they got a, a white lady by the window. 
they can't put their people there. Their people are very um, presumptuous. Their children are presumptuous and arrogant. They think that they are Americans. White Americans. Yeah, they actually think they're white, but they're not. And they come from very, very poor places, poor government, and then come to this country. And we, as black people, political thought leaders, community organizers, get in front of their issue and call for safety when we are dying by province, by a province element, a force of government, and province crimes due to that element. We are suffering that. We are suffering that. We are suffering that. One second. I'm sorry. My phone is ringing. I'm very, very sorry. Yes, we are suffering that and also we're suffering the fact that we have no inheritance, which is reparation or legacy, to keep up with the disadvantage that we have never been offered and other groups have access to that from cheaper labor over our heads and our experience in our home, we have nowhere else to go. This is our home that's been given over to someone else so that that person or that group can now control us and also suppress us under them. Buying from their stores, and some of you guys have them as managers and leaders. So why wouldn't we agree with the president on that? These people need to go home. We have to correct our issues. Yeah, we want to get rid of white supremacy. Yeah, we want to make it equal. But in the process, however, we need to get rid of this decadent veil that they're using to weaponize another people against us, not themselves. And these are white liberals. These are liberals. And some Republicans that are in business, that's why Trump lost half of his base. But we're speaking truth to power and we're talking about lesser evils. It, you know what annoys me? It, it annoys me when black people think like children. Older black people at that. Folks running around with Joe Biden face mask on. People running around looking at this. Hum, humming along. Mexicans taking you away. Teaching their children to be better than your kids. And you talking about some, yeah, you know. Um, we we going to make sure you all, y'all okay because... That president is racist. Y'all, we know y'all don't understand, but we've been dealing with... Shut up! And then they look at you with this little... Um, with this little crazy smile they have. Because they really don't know what you're talking about. They really don't care you're talking. As long as you put some action in when they're in trouble. They don't even speak your language. They know that black people fight and go sit down. And they know that they get, um, they, they reciprocate some type of, um, they get a they get a, a reaction. So I don't speak English. They get a reaction. Oh, this person don't speak English, poor person. Or this person uh, is suffering something. We're poor, very poor. We poor inside the, inside the first world. So they got another caravan coming. Black people wake up. That's all I'm saying. That's all we're talking about. Me and me and my family, we will be aware. We will serve the truth. We will serve the truth. Thank you for joining me. I'd like to come back and talk to you. This is King Hart. Please subscribe to my channel. I will be doing other things on my channel, updating my channel, and continuing the conversation so that we can be liberated inside our own community and starting with self-preservation. We will be constantly ringing the bell upon reparations. In every sector of the black community, um, I will proxy. So thank you for being out there and thank you thought leaders for giving us our um, identity in this new age and this new uh, agenda. Thank you for joining me.
As I say to the United States government, cut the check. 